Hey guys, it's Rick from Rick Chat RC. Welcome to part 7 of the Let's Build a Plane series. Now this one's taken a bit of extra time to put out there because I must admit I have finally caught up with myself. So in this episode I show you how I build the elevator and the rudder, the horizontal stabilizer, the vertical stabilizer. I show you how I make it all pretty and at the very end I show you a nice glimpse of what the end product of this aeroplane is going to look like. So stay tuned, I hope you like it, it's coming up next. Okay, so now we are going to build and cut out the elevator and the rudder and the horizontal stabilizer and the vertical stabilizer. That's just a brief diagram of what it will look like with the measurements. And this is the leftover piece of foam board that I'm going to be using. It's got the paper on both sides and as you can see I've already put the packing tape on one side. So that's an off cut from something previous that I was working on. This is another example of an off cut where the paper has been removed from one side and as you can see it's just a little bit too flimsy to be used as a control surface too flexible too wobbly and I just thought I'd show you that the quill foam I'm using does require the paper to be on both sides so this is not useful even though it's going to be a horizontal stabilizer or a rudder or an elevator as you can see it's just for me it's too flexible too flimsy not good enough so I just thought I'd show you that one before I get onto it so I will not be using a piece like that I will always keep the paper on both sides for my control services so back to the original piece look at that nice and firm exactly what we're after so now I'm going to prepare and cut it. So we're going to go into time-lapse mode in a moment. Uh, but before we actually do that, I'm just going to quickly cover the other side with some packing tape. And uh, you've seen this process before for the wing and the fuselage. Well, I'm just doing the exact same process now for the horizontal stabilizer and the vertical stabilizer, which will be the rudder and the elevator also. So just finishing up with some excess trimming there and in a moment I'll show you what a nice piece I've got to work with there she is all finished ready to go so from that I'm going to cut out the horizontal stabilizer and the vertical stabilizer and then attach the rudder and the elevator to both of those nice and firm just the way we like it nice shiny smooth finish also like I said that's the paint job all done and ready to go so we're back in time-lapse mode just making out the measurements preparing to cut and you'll see in a moment what we end up with so that's the horizontal stabilizer now in a moment I'm going to cut the taper and you will see exactly what the back wing looks like. That's the other side. It's all ready to go. Just have to cut it to shape, which is what I'm about to do shortly. So we go back into time-lapse mode. And there we have it. I've cut out the shape of the back wing or the horizontal stabilizer. It's ready to go. Packing tape on both sides. Nice, smooth, clean, shiny finish. We'll add the elevator to that later on. So stick around, I'll show you how we do that. Now I'm about to do the same or a similar cutout for the vertical stabilizer, which is where the rudder will hang off. So we're back in time lapse mode. I'm sure you can see the shape I'm cutting out. 
and there it is that's our vertical stabilizer packing tape on both sides once again nice smooth clean shiny finish and the rudder will hang off that so in a moment we're actually going to cut the rudder strip and the elevator strip and attach to both of those pieces this is just a brief demonstration of what it will look like when it's stuck to each other so the measurements have been cut precisely so the fit is exactly as you like it or the fit is exactly as I like it just showing you a few more angles the two-tone color contrast there that's how it will join when I hot glue it together and that's pretty much ready to go now in a moment I will be cutting out the rudder and the elevator control surfaces that's the finished product for now at that stage okay we're back in time-lapse mode and I'm simply cutting out the elevator strip just making sure it's flush now the elevator is not going to be that wide don't worry I'm going to cut it to size instead of a one and a half inch strip I'm actually cutting a two inch strip because the fuselage on this plane is not as long you can experiment, you can have it anything you like. Ed from Experimental Airlines normally recommends one and a half to two. This time I've decided to go with a two inch strip. That's what she looks like so far. There will be hinge tape on the top surface of that. And we will be cutting a bevel so that the elevator motion moves freely up and down. I'll show you that in a moment also. Now this is the cutout for the rudder control surface. We're back in time-lapse mode again. Making sure it's all nice and flush on both sides. Make the cut and there you have the rudder control surface. Now I'm going to cut that to size also and I'm making this a 2 inch control surface as well. And there you have it. The rudder strip has been cut ready to go there'll be hinge tape on top of that control surface too where, the, where that tape is I'll show you that later also that's what she looks like for now we will be cutting a bevel there so the rudder will move left and right equally without any hindrance And once again, a little test fit, test display, that's what she looks like. Starting to take shape. It's starting to have a little bit more character. And when that's on the back part of the fuselage, it will look fantastic. I'll show you that a little bit after as well. Okay, so now I am preparing to cut that bevel or that taper on the underside of the elevator strip so that it will move up equally which it does now and more importantly it will move down equally so there will be hinge tape on the top surface there where the tape is and so that's where the hinge mechanism will be but we're going to cut a bevel on the underside of that control surface a 45 degree bevel or taper and that's the area where that is going to occur so I'll show you in a moment how I do that now I think I've explained before that I uh, I don't like using the knife I'm just taking off a little strip there because that's where I'm going to do the sanding I get a much better result from using a sanding block and that little white strip there which exposed the foam 
is where I will shape that bevel. So approximately 45 degrees. The foam is 5mm thick, so I've come out 5mm from the edge. That'll give me a 45mm taper or bevel. So I'm just removing the tape and I'm going to work on the elevator control surface on its own by turning it upside down and using a sanding block to produce that taper angle that I've shown you so often before in my previous videos. So using a straight edge to help with that and you get a really nice smooth even bevel or taper. Have a look at that. I'm really pleased with that. I get a good result each and every time. If the knife works for you, go right ahead. Do whatever works for you. I'm just showing you what works for me. And 9.9 uh, .9 times out of 10, I get a great result. So that's the underside. That's the top side. That's how she'll move up and down. I'll do a brief test fit in a moment to show you how this will work. And that's pretty much how it's going to be. Hinge tape on the top. It will equal amount of up and down elevator. As you can see, that bevel enables the articulation of that control surface to move freely the way we like. So I'm just going to do a test fit back on the horizontal stabilizer and tape it together again temporarily to simulate the hinge tape in place. So that is now the horizontal stabilizer with the elevator in place. So it moves up and down freely exactly the way we like. That's exactly what we need. You don't need anything more, you don't need anything less, it's perfect. That's what the underside will look like. That'll all be covered with packing tape shortly. And the whole control surface will look like one integrated piece. Moves very nicely. It's just another angle. So you can see what it looks like. And now I'm going to apply the exact same process for the rudder. So that's the rudder at the moment, and we're about to cut that same bevel on the end of that control surface. So it can move left and right equally with the hinge tape on one side. That's where I'm going to do the bevel. And I'm about to do the exact same process, just removing the tape so I can work on the rudder strip by itself on its own. I'll be using a straight edge like last time. I'll be taking off that little strip first. That signifies where I will perform that bevel sand or that bevel cut. That's where the bevel will be. And right now we're going to go right back to time-lapse mode and I'm using a sanding block, as I always do, to produce that taper. It will be smooth and constant and even throughout. Look at that. Very nice. That's a beautiful outcome. And that's our rudder strip which is going to hang off the end of the vertical stabilizer. That's how she's going to move, left and right, hinged tape on one side, moving, operating at exactly the right angle. So I'll temporarily put that back with some tape to hold it all together. 
and we're pretty much ready to apply the packing type to the control surfaces now so we can finish off both the elevator rudder as one integrated piece so there'll be one entirely completed piece for the horizontal stabilizer with the elevator and one completed piece for the vertical stabilizer and the rudder so just showing you the articulation of both surfaces one last time from all angles very easy to achieve uh, especially when you're working with foam uh, very effective also that's our rider guys and that's what she's going to look like once again when it's all hanging together okay so now I'm preparing to place the hinge tape on one side of the surface there you have it that's in place all I have to do now after that is put the packing tape on top and underneath and that will look like one fully integrated control surface just making sure that it looks right that's a close-up that's the underside that is basically the horizontal stabilizer and the elevator complete all I have to do is put the packing tape over the top and on the underside and it's a finished product and I'm about to show you now how I do that so I'm starting with the uh, underside we're back in time-lapse mode putting the orange tape in place smoothing it down making sure there's no lumps bumps creases trimming off the excess putting the second piece over the bevel hinge taper section Pressing down everywhere nicely and firmly and evenly to make sure it's in place. No creases, no bubbles. And in a moment I will show you what this looks like as the finished product. I think it looks quite incredible actually. Looks like a fully integrated control piece with no cuts in between, with no joins. That's the horizontal stabilizer with the elevator hanging off it with the underside already completed and covered with packing tape so just finishing it off by trimming off any excess and then we will apply the blue colored tape on the top surface this will cover the hinge tape and make it look like a fully integrated control surface with no joins just checking it here and there making sure it's all smooth with no bubbles no creases attention to detail does produce a great outcome there she is the underside is done now I'm preparing to do the top section so out comes the blue packing tape Applying the two strips, the two sections, cutting off the excess, trimming the overflow, making sure it's all nice with no bubbles, no creases. And that's the finished product. Have a look at this. Beautiful. A fully integrated horizontal stabilizer with elevator attached as one integrated
peace. No joins. Blue on one side, orange on the other. I'll be covering up the edges later. It moves up and down exactly the way we like it. We have down elevator, we have up elevator. It's moving beautifully. And that's the underside. That's our elevator, guys. That's pretty much ready to put on the plane. Smooth, shiny, finished, completed surface. Now we're going to do the exact same process for the vertical stabilizer and the rudder. So applying the hinge tape to one side that's what it looks like before we put the packing tape over the top moving up and down or left and right as a rudder should the way we expect the bevel the taper is in place and working very nicely. Okay, so I'm just going to trim off the excess there and prepare to cover with packing tape so I can complete this control surface also. Just double checking that it's all nice. Okay, now we're going to get the uh, packing tape and we're going to cover the other side of that rudder, just like we did with the elevator. Back in time lapse mode, performing the trim, cutting off the excess. Okay, that's one piece. The second final piece is going down. Just making sure it's nice and smooth, no creases, no wrinkles, no bubbles. Just remember, attention to detail achieves a really good result. Cutting off the excess, and that's the finished product. Once again, I think that looks pretty damn good. And you can achieve this yourself as well. It's very easy. That's our rudder. All we have to do is finish off by putting the blue packing tape on the top side to cover the hinge tape and to complete the overall look of that entire control surface. Vertical stabilizer with the rudder in place, ready to go. The underside has been covered now we're going to cover the top side. So the blue packing tape is going to go on shortly. Just working out where things will go, how they'll fit with the overlap. Okay, so the first piece is going down. And the second piece is going down. Cut off the excess. Trim, out, trim off any overflow, smooth everything down, and there she is. What a beautifully finished vertical stabilizer with rudder. That looks pretty damn good, I'd have to say. In fact, I am very pleased with that. It looks awesome. And if you guys are doing the same thing or a similar thing, you will achieve the same outcome. It's not that hard. It's a very simple process, as I've shown you. That's the rudder. Finished. Moves left and right beautifully. Smooth, shiny. Finish. That's that one. Done. 
completed. Just show you a few more angles. There are the two pieces now. That's what she looks like all together. And that's how she'll be, that's how she'll be placed at the back of the fuselage. Stuck down and will look like that. That's the other side. Showing another angle with the two-tone colour. And that's it. Looks very nice. And before we attach it to the body of the fuselage, I am going to show you how I insert or produce the control horns for this. So I'm really only using what I learned from Ed from Experimental Airlines. He uses the gift card cutout trick. So that's all I'm using. Gift cards. Just showing you the type of gift card I've got. Doesn't have to be anything special. As long as you've got a throwaway gift card you can use it. So I'm simply going to cut the shape that's that's a completed one so you can see what the control horn looks like and I've already bent it at 90 degrees so they're my two control horns they can be used for aileron they can be used for rudder they can be used for elevator I'll show you how I make them now they're very simple very effective and they're very strong too. That's just a gift card with a shape of a control horn cut out of it. So there's the line marking that I've made for a control horn. That's what I'm going to cut out or fold away. As you'll see in a moment. You can cut it out completely with the knife or you can just gently make a score cut and then bend the rest away. So there you go. I have finished cutting out and breaking off one of the shaped control horns out of a gift card. That's the finished product up to now. In a moment I'm going to show you how I bend it 90 degrees so that it's ready for insertion into the control surface so we can glue it in place. That's it basically. Plastic gift card control horn. The making of. So to bend it over you can either use a straight edge or you can use a little mini clamp. On this occasion, I've decided I'm going to use one of my little mini clamps to hold it exactly in position where I've drawn the line for the fold crease to occur. And I'll show you in a moment how I do that. I clamp down hard so it doesn't move. And then I simply pull one side over like so, 90 degrees. And it's done and ready to go. That's a control horn, finished, ready for insertion. You can choose where you want to use it. Elevator, rudder, aileron, doesn't matter. They're all the same. That's the finished control surface, guys, made out of a gift card. Ready to insert into any surface. Rudder, elevator, aileron, doesn't matter. Just making sure the, the fold is correct and accurate and stays at 90 degrees. And that's just showing you a couple which are exactly the same and identical, ready for use. Especially if you're going to use them for ailerons. So now I'm going to show you how we actually insert them into the control surface. So there's one for the elevator, one for the rudder.
So just sizing up where it's going to go, where it's going to fit. Just showing you once again before I do that what it looks like. A gift card control horn ready to be inserted into the control surface. So I've got my horizontal stabilizer and I'm positioning the control horn where it will sit. Just to show you, that's how it's going to work when it's in position. Right on the hinge edge there. And it's going to work beautifully. Just showing you a little bit more from all angles. I'm just measuring up where it's going to sit. And I'm going to make a simple cut with the knife shortly and then press through from the top side. So I've lined it up, I've measured, measured it up. Make a little incision. And that's what it looks like. Halfway through, ready to go. So you push it in from the top. It's just foam, so it goes through very, very easily. It stays firm as you push it through, but it's quite an effective way to make a control surface that will do the job. So I'm pushing it all the way down, and that's how she's going to sit, and that's how I'm going to glue it. Now from the underside, that's what it looks like. That is ready to accept a push rod. And it will work exactly the way we intended. Up elevator, down elevator. It's perfect. Just showing you again from a few more angles so you can get the idea. Uh, that's That control horn is ready to go. That's what she's going to look like when it's in glued in place and I'll show you how we do that in a moment also just showing you a few more angles of the underside that's how she's going to look when it's all glued in place that's the completed control horn in position that's for our elevator Okay, so now we'll put that aside and I'm going to do the exact same process for the rudder. So just uh, sizing it up and looking where I will place that control horn. I have to take that tapered cut into account so it's not too low and not too high. So I'm just going to fiddle around with the position, see where the best fit where the best location might be. Let's put a marker, line it up. That's where this is going to go. That's for the rudder. And that's going to get pushed in from the other side, like we did with the elevator. And I'm about to make the incision with the knife and we will push that control horn through and it will sit nicely like it did for the elevator. So that's what it looks like halfway through as we start the insertion. And then we simply push all the way through like we did with the elevator and it's done in place ready to go as a working rudder that is pretty much ready to accept a control horn and be used to operate the rudder left and right
nicely done, very easily done, very easy to achieve. One of the simplest processes of the whole build, I'd have to say. Easiest processes of the whole build. It's a very easy step. Just showing you a bit more from all angles. Just checking it here, checking it there. And I am going to prepare now to glue it in place for both control surfaces. So I'm putting my heat gun on and I'm applying a dab of hot glue. Making sure it's pushed down and held nicely and firmly while the glue dries. And that's it. The rudder is complete. That's glued in position. Now we're going to cover that a little bit later on too. I'll show you what I do there. Just showing you the rudder section for now. We're going to do the exact same thing for the elevator coming up very shortly. So there we have the articulation of the rudder left and right. We're, doing this, we're going to do the same thing now with the elevator. Put a dab of hot glue. Push it down again, hold it, wait till it dries, and that is the completed control horn in place for the elevator. Just showing you from all angles again, making sure it's nice and secure. And the glue is dry. And that's pretty much the elevator done. There's a close-up of the completed product. The control horn glued in place, ready to go. We have up and down elevator working very nicely there. And that's both control surfaces done. Now the next step, I'm going to use some additional tape and we're going to cover the other side of that plastic control horn. It helps secure it in place too. There you go, it's like a little bandage strip. So that plastic doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. Very nice. Only on the top side it's needed. You don't need to do anything to the underside. So just showing you from all angles what that will look like. Now I do that to all my control horn surfaces. So it's basically invisible and the plastic doesn't stick out like a sore thumb on the other side of the surface. So that's the elevator done. Now I'm going the same thing with the rudder, just showing you what it looks like before we put that little square bandage strip over the top of it. Just giving a quick measurement with the ruler, cutting out the square that I need from the tape. Putting it in place, pressing down firmly, evenly, smoothly. And that's the finished product for the rudder. We've covered up that white plastic base of the gift card using the same colored tape and that's done ready ready to hot glue into place on the fuselage with the back wing just showing you from all angles 
what it looks like in the lights there. Yeah, nicely done. Very neat finish. Yeah, the two pieces all done and complete. Just a little brief uh, display on what it will look like when they're together. The lighting is not the best at times, but I'm sure you can get the picture of what I'm trying to show. And this, finally, is what my aeroplane looks like. I'm calling mine the Raven. That's basically the finished product. With the front hatches in place, the horizontal stabilizer and the vertical stabilizer with rotor and elevator in place, the main wing in place. I still have to add the electronics and the motor. So I haven't worked out exactly where she balances. That's why I haven't cut the length of that top fuselage piece yet. But that's what the plane looks like. That's my Raven.